we have all been told the benefits of talking with strangers, whether it's developing our social skills, preparing you for that upcoming interview, or just ultimately getting yourself out of our comfort zone and building your emotional intelligence. And the hopes that perhaps in your next MBTI report, an I transforms itself into E. On the contrary, we're also advised against stranger danger, that we never really know what the other's intentions can be. And though both of these arguments are completely valid, I do want to bring in a new point, perspective, on how conversations with strangers can allow us to better send ourselves, those around us, and just humanity in general. In other words, allowing us to express more compassion as well as empathy. And so my story started when I submitted my resignation letter at KPMG. Up until that point, I was frightened to talk to someone I did not know because I was fearful that my lack of expertise or confidence would become apparent and they would notice. Fake it until you make it with a statement I did not grasp onto in my first full-time job out of college. And so on my last day at the office, I decided to be a bit more bold. I knocked on every single door on that floor, and it didn't matter behind it if it was a senior manager, a partner, or a director. It was not to impress them, and certainly not to be on board onto the next exciting project, not that it was possible. And so I became enamored by their warm well welcome as well as their experiences when I had the opportunity to bring one of the largest U.S. fast food chain restaurants into Canada, and I took this opportunity to learn more about what her experiences. I asked her, what is one thing you wish you would have known earlier in your career journey? And she told me, I wish I was more okay with making decisions in a group setting, and sometimes it involves being disliked. In that brief 10-minute conversation, I learned about leadership in a way I couldn't have through YouTube or through books. And I also got to empathize on what it meant to be a woman in a sector dominated by men. So joining a FinTech early stage up, startup was my next destination, as a woman in sales. They really put me to the test as they flew me to conferences all across North America, Nashville, Las Vegas, New York, and I was expected to talk to strangers in a setting like this. And I was also expected to close deals that I have not even created. And so I remember calling my boss, super anxious, Mike, what should I do? What are my expectations out of this conference? And you said, be happy, have fun, be yourself, and talk to people. <coughs> so that's literally what I did. Up the floors, down the floors, I talked to everyone. I even talked to the staff who were making coffee, staff who were opening doors, only to realize some were only doing with a side hustle while being a gymnastic full-time. And for those who went to the event for the event, I asked what drove you to the top of your industry and what motivated you to do what you did every single day. And by the end of that three-day conference, I learned how to dance tango on the dance floor with Bank of America's senior leadership team, and also got to make some incredible friends in the banking industry. I realized that meaningful conversations always came when I talked about things unrelated to sales. For example, I started a meeting by asking them, what is that neon shark in your background? Only to know that they are GD in their past career life, and that they spent years as a SaaS entrepreneur. So as a 24-year-old, I learned that there was many different types of jobs that I could take, and life was about experiencing those different types of identities. And so not only was I starting to make friends all across the world, I learned more about myself, why I did the things I did, and it was all thanks to them. So I became more bold in the decisions I made as well. It increased my confidence, increased my interest in getting to know strangers. So on December of 2022, I, in a Costco food court, I told my mother I was going to spend a week in San Francisco to meet interesting people. But my goal was to sneak into Stanford's classes and listen in and possibly meet a professor I admired for a very, very long time. Andrew Ann, professor at Stanford University in computer science, also co-founder of Coursera, the learning platform we all use and we like to share on LinkedIn. And that's kind of what I meant by goal. My goal was to go to SF and meet him. And so the flight was very expensive. I want to maximize the value, so I decided to write a children's book about AI. I collaborated with an illustrator based in the Philippines. His name is David. And throughout this one month journey, we shared our whys. His why was to write as many children's books as possible for when his daughter grows up, she could read them. And then my why was to meet someone who deeply inspired me. And so on January 17th of 2023, I am born onto the flight, my first time to SF. I was searching for the outlet, and then a Chinese grandma beside me pointed to the bottom of the front seat. And I chuckled, I was like, oh, that's where it is. And then we started talking, she shared with me her story of moving from 
Shanghai to SF and how she brought in her passion by teaching children how to create art. And also how one of her, children, how one of her students got their artworks into the White House. I exchanged that same passion for teaching university students English. A few days in, and this is Cherry, a few days in, we met up for brunch and I got to visit her art studio. And before I went back home, she made me some Chinese desserts for me to bring back to my family. I couldn't stop but to think, imagine if it was my grandmother and I was a stranger and I could get to learn her stories. A conversation between strangers it had started, I thought to myself. And so, growing up, you will inevitably encounter experiences that will make you skeptical of other people's intentions. You'll become doubtful, and then you will close yourself off to who you know and what you know. But after talking to so many strangers, and after teaching hundreds of students English, where they shared their stories with me, I realized that we were far more similar to one another. We had feelings of anxiety, feelings of being lost, fear of judgment, and much more. And so I hope that by sharing the fact that we are far more similar to one another, like coming to this TEDx talk, I hope that talking with strangers becomes a bit easier for you. And another reason why I love talking with strangers so much is because with every conversation that you get to start, you get to restart to your own life. And I don't mean by getting to create an entirely new identity, but the way that you tell your stories, you get to create your own sequence. I could very well start with, that appetizer looks delicious, or what brought you to this event, and then it can lead to a series of stories that you want to tell in the sequence that you want. And so, from witnessing, from talking with a nurse, a retired nurse who witnessed the 9-11, to meeting a security guard who created his own company as a side hustle, to a retired venture capitalist who's creating the next DoorDash for local ice cream shops in California, I've gotten to meet some incredible people, and I learned about compassion, more about myself, and became much more comfortable in the unknown. And so, I do want to finish off this story with what happened to the children's book. Did I get to meet Professor Andrew N? And the answer is no, although it's close. I got to talk with some inspiring students on campus. I got to meet the security guard who opened the doors at Coursera for me to grab some snacks. I got to meet Cherry, the art instructor. I even got to befriend a homeless person to learn about compassion. And so by the time I had finished that book, I had felt so much joy and warmth from getting to know everyone from KPMG to the FinTech startup to being strangers in vacation that I note in my acknowledgements. When your world is filled with love, you'll be as curious as a child, and you'll want to explore what the world has to offer in terms of possibilities. So I hope for each one of you, you get to explore the world on your own terms, one story at a time. Thank you. I'm sure our networking will be very exciting and interesting now that we're about to break the boundaries between strangers and all of us.